in the true spirit of rethinking, I think we need to not only uh, rethink our, our paradigms, but I want to also propose that we think differently about law. Uh, so if we think about law not only as a set of rules, but as a set of practices, which any good lawyer will tell you, and many of you are lawyers who are not practicing in the courtroom uh, or in the legislature, but in organizations uh, and in boardrooms uh, and in many other sites. What if we thought about law and other things as uh, really thinking systematically and rigorously about how change happens, not just about the norms themselves? And also, my mentor in law school was Robert Cover. Uh, and uh, he talked about law as the relationship between the is, the ought, and the what might be. So law is what's really structuring us to shoot for what we want to, to think about the problem with what we have, and then to think about as pragmatic visionaries. How do we get from here to there in our lifetime? Um, so uh, I think we've already heard that we have a real challenge in doing that, given the multi-level complex dynamics that produce the world we currently live in, that produce structural inequality. And this uh, image is really intended to capture that multi-level dynamic. And I think you can see, uh, just thinking about our panel this morning, earlier this morning and, and uh, now, uh, that there are dynamics that occur on the individual and the relational level, uh, such as we heard the discussion of stereotyping or I don't know how to get the person, the women into the room and once they're in the room, I don't know what to do with them. And what about those norms that privilege marriage, those moving us up the hierarchy to the ecological level? And then there are all those levels in, in between. Uh, how are we currently set up uh, what are the norms and values at the organizational level? Uh, how do networks actually reinforce what's happening at the organizational level? And uh, those networks are not only individual cutting across organizations, but also they are networks of organizations. So you can't change higher education institutions without dealing with the networks that are bringing the physics faculty together across organizations. So you can't only look at the organizational level. So, uh, this is a, a, a complicated set of dynamics, and to achieve change in any sustainable way, you can't only work on one level. You have to be thinking uh, across levels, up and down levels, and this, you know, we look at this requ requirement of systems change, and it's really easy for us to throw up our hands and say, this is just too hard to do, right? How do we do this? This is just too hard to do. Uh, now, much of traditional law, conventional law, looking at law in terms of legal rules, um, focuses on addressing this problem through the lens of structural inequality. So what we need to do then is to expand beyond formal legal notions of inequality and think much more structurally. Inequality is not just people saying blacks need not a apply or women need not apply, but look at things like unconscious bias, look at things like uh, patterns of interaction and stereotyping. And this is very, very important work and needs to continue. But I want to suggest, as I think we've heard from a number of the panelists, that this framing of the issue is insufficient, necessary, but not sufficient. And you know, so first, I want to just very quickly say why is that so? Why you know why is framing the problem solely in terms of structural inequality, whether it's gender or race or class, uh, is not going to actually get us toward transformational change at these multiple levels? Although it continues to be necessary, framing a problem only in terms of of um, structural inequality around any of these categories is going to underspecify the problem. It's either going to pick only one group at the exclusion of others. It's going to make it difficult sometimes to see the interconnection between gender dynamics, race dynamics, dynamics of, of inequality, uh, and the way in which the overall system is working. What is it that we value 
in a, our institutions of higher education? And how is that affecting everyone and specifically affecting women in particular? Are there disciplinary privileges that happen to be correlated with the way people in different groups experience themselves? The second issue is that uh, we have a kind of over-reliance on causes as a way to figure out what's, what solutions are. So we do need to understand cause, but understanding what led us to have a system that's set up the way it is, that privileges a particular set of, of, um, of individuals, doesn't tell us how we're gonna change. You know, that you need to actually think about how you move forward and where you wanna move forward to, not only how we got, what, what, are the, what are the issues or challenges with what we're dealing with. Um, a third challenge is, connects to that multi-level, is that uh, we haven't spent sufficient attention on the dynamics of change and how change actually happens. We think about that, think about our scholarship as the last paragraph uh, of the scholarship uh, of the article, but we, don't, we haven't really thought hard in both our, our research and our practice systematically and rigorously about how change happens and what our theories of change are that are gonna produce the outcomes that we want. Uh, and finally, we have to be able to think not only at the level we're operating at, whether it's the micro level of relationships or the network level or the macro level, we also need to think about the relationships across those levels. So what is it that you need to do at a policy level if you want to change institutions so that you have a set of relationships that are happening between people uh, around, for example, mentorship? So um, how do we do that? That's a, a tall order. So, um, I, I want uh, to offer the necessity of, of thinking uh, about nested frameworks for change um, and frameworks that hold on to law in its more conventional sense, uh, hold on to concerns around remedying discrimination, which we know from our, prior, from our panel are narrowly uh, laid out. Uh, narrowly structured, uh, but situating them within a broader framework. Um, a framework that, um, a, that's just a placeholder here, this language of full participation. I think we heard uh, Peter actually talk in his introductory remarks about how we're trying to create contexts that enable people to thrive, to realize their potential. Uh, this is a, 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 fr a framework, we could think about it as Amartya Sen-like, Think about creating contexts that enable people to realize their capabilities, moving from an individual, an only individual or societal definition of that, but really thinking about what does that actually mean uh, in particular settings. And nesting that within broader frameworks about really revitalizing institutions and revitalizing dem democracy. Um, the work that, that um, I've been doing to do this really focuses on how do you do this at the organizational level? And I think the organizational level is often a level that gets left out. We think about what happens at the level of individuals or relationships, or we think what happens at the societal or policy level. But it's often at the organizational level that you can really get traction. So how is it if what we're trying to do is to constitute environments that enable full participation, uh, knowing that to get there we also have to eliminate bias and discrimination and we also need to be thinking about revitalizing democracy, what are a set of strategies uh, and ways of thinking about moving in that direction? So I want to think about five reframing principles. This work has come out of really looking, working with organizations that are interested in transformational change. Uh, and I want to suggest that those are organizations where we're likely to get the most traction. It's by looking really systematically and hard and rigorously at the many organizations that want to move in this direction and don't know how to do it. And how is it that they actually work through that challenge? So one principle uh, is to move from structural inequality as a frame, and this is very much along the lines of what Tamiko was just talking about, uh, to shared purpose. So what is a, a, a widely shared concern that's identified in a context 
that relates to inequality, but is not only defined in terms of gender or race, and that will bring the men to the table, that will bring people from different disciplines to the table, that will bring people from different generations to the table. It has to be something that is urgent, meaning people will come to ta the table around it, and something that really is connected to core aspects of the mission of the organization. So you're gonna get traction on rethinking some of those incentives and values that need to be rethought in order to include women and people of color. So to uh, illustrate the kind of research that we've been doing is asking the question among a whole bunch of different people, who succeeds and thrives in this organization? And who doesn't? And why not? Uh, and what are the barriers that are operating there? And by asking the question in those ways, we learn how different categories, including gender, including race, but not limited by them, are or are not enabling you to move toward this, this uh, value of, of, of this shared value or common concern. It could be health, it could be education, it could be uh, making sure that law schools can remain relevant in the 21st century. Uh, it could be uh, any value that is of urgent concern in the context. The second move is to move from a framework of either or race or gender or class or men or women to a both and move. And this is reflective of a kind of observation that comes out of this work that we need to have this paradoxical uh, approach to gender and to race, which is that we simultaneously need to continually keep it front and center. If you don't ask the question, what's happening to women? What's happening to people of color? What's happening to people of low income status? You will lose them. But if you ask the question in terms of gender, in terms of race, you will not be able to sustain the, the, uh, the dynamics of transformation that need to be pushed forward in order to actually um, transform the culture. So you need to simultaneously, this is a paradox, think about race and not think about race. Think about gender and not think about gender. Uh, and that can be done by um, structuring how gender or race is connecting to the larger goal that you're trying to achieve. Third piece is to move from thinking only at a micro level or at a macro level, the relationship level around stereotypes at the macro level, what are we doing across all of society or across the whole institution to this meso level. And a meso level is an in-between, it's really about linkages, linking across levels. So how do we think whatever level we're working on how do we think about its relationship to the level below and the level above? So if you're thinking about institutional policy, how do we, simul how do we think a lot about how people are experiencing that policy in interactions between faculty and students? And how is that policy being shaped by what's happening at the disciplinary level or at the level of policy around work family? Fourth, we have to think, move away from isolating causes. We spend a lot of time thinking what's causing this problem to thinking about interactions and mechanisms and leverage points. Where do we get traction? How do we move forward around change? How can we use meetings to be opportunities for real learning and collaboration? How do we think about events that are happening anyway or policies that need to be rethought as ways of deeply moving forward and integrating this into a set of practices? And I think the, in some ways the driver of all of this work is really, uh, it sounds trite, but it, it, how do you make this happen, is building these kind of ongoing processes of reflection and learning and building that as a practice that is somehow institutionalized into the, uh, the DNA of an organization. Uh, and we should be able to do this in the academy, right? We're all about learning. Uh, but think about meetings that we have, think about events, think about accreditation, think about many of the routines and practices, and they're really often not linked in to our core values of research, of our core values of teaching, uh, our core values of really cultivating leadership. So what if we really came up with a set of ideas that we're, were these, these urgent goals that we could come together around in a sustained way over a period of years and thought about how we were gonna mobilize leadership to build this set of values into some really systematically pursued body of work 
And then what if we thought about our policy and law, not only as a system of rules, but as a way to build the incentives, the capacity, uh, and the accountability around moving in this direction at the institutional level. Uh, so uh, that's what I'm hoping to invite. Thank you.